learning about how he went out. You know, if you really think about this, and uh, all the things we kind of learned last week, you know, we have Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? Abraham blessed Isaac. Isaac blessed Jacob. And then he sends Jacob away into exile. Wait a minute. What just happened here? I mean, you ever think about that? So all these things that just happened. He just was blessed twice by his father. Once with physical blessing, once with spiritual blessing. And then, this is, this is great, now you need to go get your bride, I'm going to send you away in exile. You need to stay away. Son, I love you, get out. I mean, yeah, it was because Esau wanted to kill him, right? But think about this for a minute. Esau wanted to kill him. Esau was the one who was there in the land, but Jacob was the one who got the blessing, and Jacob went off into exile. What's wrong with this picture? Guys, it's very prophetic. Very prophetic about exile and return. So we're going to see a lot of things in this portion. All right? So you ready to get into it? All right, we'll start with this. Vayetzi, it reads this way, Genesis 28.10. So Jacob went out from Beersheba, and he traveled toward Haran. Guys, Beersheba means well of the oath, and then Haran means dry so he went from here, a place of Beersheba, a place that had running water, had life, had living water. Testimony, the well of the oath. This is where you know, God was sworn to his forefathers, and, and he's sent off away from the water to Haran, a place that's dry, a place of parch. Can you imagine what he's thinking? Right? He went out from the well of the oath, and he traveled to the dry place. But does this sound familiar as well? I mean, here he's been raised his life. He's dwelling in tents, doing these things. And then, that's great. He's been preparing for his life in these aspects. But now's the time when he needs to start walking it out. And in order for him to fully walk in what he was supposed to receive, he, he was exiled so that that could be fulfilled. He was sent off into the wilderness, sent off into the desert so that that could be fulfilled. Look at this, Luke 4.1. Yeshua, filled with the Ruach HaKadosh, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. When Yeshua was baptized at Yardin, at the Jordan River, where did he go? Off into the wilderness. And it's like he was just, you know, here's just a testimony of the promise. Here's a testimony of these great things. And he goes off into the dry places. We see something similar and do we see something that, that's happening here? Maybe a time of testing, maybe a time of trial, maybe just a time of God wanting to get their attention and just have that time just with them. Remember, when, like when they came out of Egypt, they went off into the wilderness. Why did they go off into the wilderness? Was it just because God wanted them to suffer? No. It's because God wanted them to bring them out of Egypt so that he could be there with them. And he brought them into the wilderness so he could spend that time with them. Right? No distractions, no hindrances. This is the word of God. This is the covenant. This is my people. Let me teach you. Let me spend time with you. Right? So he came to a certain place. This is interesting. It says he came to a certain place. The word is pagah. means he lighted upon a certain place. In other words, he's not here by happenstance. He's not here by coincidence. He's here because this is where he was supposed to be at this time. The word pagah can also mean intercession. can also mean prayer. And so here he's at, right at this place. And when is he here? Well, he's ready to set up camp for the evening. Why? Because it's getting dark. The sun's going down, right? Even that. Look at this. Genesis 28, 11. And he stayed the night there because the sun had set. Guys, he's just leaving. He's just coming out of this place. He just got these blessings, and now he's being exiled. Can you imagine the doubts that could be setting into his mind right now? I was just given these great, awesome things that are supposed to be a blessing to me and my family, but I'm being sent off away and, and to these dry places, and, and you know it's going to be harder for me. And Esau's there still with mom and dad, right? Can you imagine what he might be struggling with right now? And see, this is where God appears to him. He, he, he gives him a dream. 
And he makes it known. He hasn't forgotten him. This is just part of what needs to happen. Right? John 9.4 says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, because the night comes when no man can work. In other words, there's a time when, when you have to stop. And then there's a time when you have to do. And so this, is, this was a time where he needed to stop. He couldn't just go wandering, or wandering around at, at night. He needed to stop. He needed to be at this place at this time. Right? So what happens here? He took a stone from the place, he put it under his head, and he lay down there to sleep. A stone? I don't know. Like, I, I, how many of you guys have a stone pillow? Even though it's considered that a lot of the stones in this area around Bethel, Bethel is soft as far as stones go, it just means they're easily carved, okay? Which could be representative of something in and of itself. When you say, and sometimes in Scripture, stone represents our hearts, and it's easily carved, so that this place could represent maybe now he's ready, to, he's open to say, Father, what is it you're showing me? What is it that you want me to receive? And he's open to hear it, right? I mean, with the distraction of his brother hanging over him, saying, sleep with one eye open, brother, <laughs> right? So here he's at this place, and, and he lays down, and even just the idea of he takes a stone from the place, and he sets it down, and he lays his head on it. He's resting his head on a stone. In other words, the stone is the foundation for his head for him to get rest, why would that be important? Just the phrasing of it. Right? Keep looking. Stone. The word for stone here is Evan. The word for stone here is Evan. Evan's like a compound word, guys. It's Ev, Av, and Ben. Okay? Av and Ben. Evan. See, you have the Aleph and the Bet. That's Av. What's Av? Father. It's the shorter, ver shorter version of Abba. It's Av, Father. Uh, Av, Raham. Okay, Father. What's Ben? Bet, Nun, Sophie. Son. What holds them together? The Bet. It's what they have in common, the Bet. What does Bet stand for? The house. And so here we have just a picture of the Father and the Son building a house together. Is that important? Yeah, when you consider that even from the very first letter of Scripture, God is building a house. He's building His house. He's building a place for Him to dwell with His people. And here, even Jacob are, he recognizes what is going on here. It's amazing when you see it. You ready to keep moving? Isaiah 28, 16. Therefore, here is what Adonai Elohim says. Look, I am laying in Zion a tested stone, a costly cornerstone, a firm foundation stone. He who trusts will not rush here and there, will not be going to and fro all over the place. And those to have that faith, have that trust to rest in him, right? Luke 20, 17. Yeshua looked searchingly at them and he said, and this is what is written in the Tanakh, the very rock which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Whoever falls on that stone will be broken in pieces, but if it falls on him, he will be crushed to powder. Jacob laid on that stone. He kind of rested himself on it. Isn't it interesting that he would take this stone and he would set it up as a memorial? Some believe that, it was that this was and we set it up as a memorial. Some believe that it could have been a stone that uh, Abraham would have used at the altar. Also believe it could also have been a stone that ended up being used at the temple. Just because of the way the phrasing of these things tie together. Look, Genesis 28, 12. And he slept, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven, and he saw the angels of God going up and down on the stairway. Stairway, I thought it was ladder. It is. It's both. Because the word that's used there can be translated either way. I'll show you that in a second. John 1, 49. So Nathaniel said, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. And Yeshua answered him, So you believe all this just because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You'll see greater things than that. And then he said to him, Yes, indeed, I tell you, you will see, now listen to this, heaven opened and what? The angels of God doing what? 
going up and coming down on the Son of Man. And he named the place Beit El, House of God, but the town originally been called Luz. So here we've got a map. If you look at this, okay, this is turned sideways. North is to the left here, okay? So what you've got, you've got uh, Jerusalem over here. And this is Bethel. And if you look, Bethel, so you guys can just see a little quicker. If you look here at Bethel, this is Beit El. Go ahead and turn them all off. You've got right here in the mountain formation, something that looks like it's written, right? If you look, this is, I've, I've centered this right here so you can see this. yod heh vav -Hey. His name is written in the mountains in Bethel. All right? And then, if you look, the, the letters also resemble Yahid. The yod heh vav -Hey also resembles the word Yahid. Yahid means only unique son. Lawrence, go ahead and turn the lights on. Yahid means only son. Much like Abraham, when he was told, take your son, your only son whom you love, it, was, it would have been Yahid. And so here at Bethel, we have a revelation of the house of God. We have a revelation of his authority. We have a revelation of the latter. We see a picture of yod heh vav -Hey, and we've also got a, a showing of his only son. In the birth order from Leah, we see a prophecy of the Messiah. It's showing this is who would come from her. Okay? Even in the names, we see the prophecy. Okay? Reuben, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda, Issachar, and Zebulun. Look at this. See a son that hears and obeys. To be associated with him is the praise of Yahweh, the reward or recompense for the wages to produce a dwelling or a habitation. In the lineage of Leah, we see a prophecy of the Messiah, of the son that would come from her, and what he would pay, and what he would produce, and what he would give us that we dwell in Him. And we have that peace in Him. He paid the way. He is the praise of God. And He paid the way for us. Isn't that awesome? So, here's a point I want to make. We are spotted sheep. Are we not? We are spotted sheep. And again, where we see Jacob's flock, the flock of Jacob, let's just say it, the flock of Israel, we are spotted sheep. Ezekiel 20, 37. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. See, you are the sheep. I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will bring you into the bond of covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels and them that transgress against me. And I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. And they shall not enter the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. Amen. All right, so we've been redeemed. Can we say amen? amen? Amen. So our spots have been washed away, right? Let's look at a few scriptures. Ephesians 5, 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it should be holy and without blemish. 1 Timothy 6, 11. But you as a man of God flee from these things and pursue what? Righteousness. Godliness, faithfulness, love, steadfastness, gentleness. 1 Timothy 6.14 Obey your commission how? Spotlessly and irreproachably until our Lord Yeshua the Messiah appears. No spots, no wrinkles, right? Washed clean. Well, if this teaching has blessed you, I want you to check out our other resources. You can check out our website at www.ruachonline.com. And there's links there to other resources that are available to you, other teachings, other books, other offerings. Uh, you can go to YouTube, Facebook, all of these things from our website. And uh, check us out, because if they enjoyed this teaching, there's going to be much more that hopefully will bless you as well. Thank you. Hi, this is Dr. David Jones from Ruach Ministries International, and I've got some exciting news for you. We have a new series coming out, six-part series of the Gospel According to Abraham. Abraham? What does he got to do with the Gospel? Well, you're going to have to find out, aren't you? The thing is, Galatians 3 says that the Gospel was proclaimed to Abraham. So what does that mean for a believer today? What does that mean to a person who is not Jewish. What does that mean to a person 
who is Jewish. What does that mean for all of us today? Well, check it out. It's a good series and it'll be coming your way soon. For more information, you can check out our website at www.ruachonline.com. Hi, this is Dr. David Jones here. I just want to say we do have some other resources available to you, one of which is a book entitled Famine, Walking and Blessing in the Time of Famine. It's based out of Amos 8, 11, and 12, talking about there's a famine of hearing the word of the Lord. So what is that famine? Does it mean the word of the Lord is not being proclaimed, or does it mean there's a famine of actually listening to it? Hmm. Food for thought, isn't it? Well, if you want to know more, check it out. Go to www.ruachonline.com and there's a link on our homepage. Just click and it'll take you to more information on the book entitled Famine, Walking in Blessing in a Time of Famine. Well, how important are the feasts of the Lord? I think we can say that if the Lord set out a banquet, set out a table and invited you to come be a partaker, would we answer? Would we hear? Would we go? Or would we blow them off because we have something more important to do? Well, that's what this book is. The king invites you to his table. Are we going to answer the call? The feast of the Lord, appointed times where the Lord has said he wants to meet with us face to face. Will we heed? Will we answer? Will we go? Check it out, www.ruachonline.com. On the homepage, there is a link to take you for more information. The King invites you to his table.